I'm used to giving testimonies my whole life um, as a testimony. So um, basically, this is um, what I'm about to do. It's not a lecture, um, but a testimony. And I hope by this you'll be encouraged. Um, you learn from the, those of us who had gone on before, and so that um, you take our good and, and not take our bad. And the Bible says that these things were written for us, um, for our good. So you learn from my life, and in fact, you should know that you're very privileged because in our time, we didn't have these learning opportunities. We, you had to um, do it from what we call secondary school, natural. You had to do things natural, natural. So you used to call it natural as it came to you. And then also um, lessons learned. So uh, at the end of the day, I hope that you would learn from um, my experience, my life, and uh, we take things from there. It's a great privilege, therefore, to share my life, my testimony um, with you. And this is how I'm going to um, order my presentation. First of all, it's not a lecture, but just so that you look for uh, major points, or uh, the summary um, points to learn. Well, whilst I'm telling you my life testimony, um, regards to entrepreneurship, regards to um, work as an, um, or preparing to be an academic and be an academic and so on and so forth. Um, you look for these points and uh, see how you also can shape your life. So let's start with the major summary points. Summary at the beginning and then and for, indeed, this slide is all that I'm going to show from now on, because I, I my life testimony in terms of the purpose of this meeting, uh, it's, it's going to come as at this, from how I started and so forth. So, in everything in life, indeed, we have to plan our life. We have to plan our families. We have to plan our economic work. We have to plan our business. So planning. And then when you have the framework of the plan, you, you pursue the goals and objectives and uh, you continue to pursue uh, by persevering. And in so doing, you prioritize that which must come first that which must come uh, on the tenth time, and so on and so forth. And then um, I would talk about multitasking or serial tasking. And then in, in pursuing, you must perform. And one of the things that you always must have in mind is that you must do your best. You must be excellent. And one of our family, uh, maybe motos, which we develop with our children, is that it's an old saying that you never stop until your good is better and your better best. And so that's what we instill onto, into us and to our children. And by, to be able to do that, you must develop, continually develop yourself, you must continually learn uh, lessons and, and use those lessons uh, uh, to better uh, yourself and and when you better yourself you find that others not only will follow you but others will ask you to come and help them um, and so you become useful to society and to others so to start everything you must have a vision you must have a goal or an object to meet and it, there's a, of course, the, the goal and goal, the biggest goal is to have a good life and live long and healthy and, uh, and be good to society. That is a big goal and love God and love your country and so forth. But you must have uh, for everything, 
Um, you do you must have a goal, you must have a vision, and, and you must have a hope to achieve and attain. And you add faith to it that you are able to do so. You it is doable. We talk about um, objectives that must be attainable and so forth. <clears throat> and then you you sit down and and find how to do what is involved. A lot of people come to in a medical school and they come and they come for interview, the entrance interview, and they have no clue at all about drug corridor medicine. None, they haven't read. So how can you say you're coming to this school when you have no clue? All you know is that you're coming to medical school. Any medical school that calls you for interview, you go. It's, um, I find it very, and it's very typical Ghanaian. That everybody's going here, it, I hear this one is good, so I'm going. No idea at all what we're doing there. No idea. Um, there was a very, you know, innocent, uh, I wouldn't say child, but I mean, I'm a grandparent. By the way, I'm a grandparent of 13, not uh, seven. Your um, information is a bit outdated. My, my children, which we are four, have been very productive. And I'm hoping that it will continue to be productive. I'm looking for more. Uh, it's the greatest joy in life uh, to reach my age and have your grandchildren with you and and you see how they are developing. It's a great joy. I mean, and they are at peace. It's a, one of the greatest joy uh, to see your grandchildren. And I'm looking forward to see my great grandchildren. Then you pursue your objective. Now you know what you want. You have envisioned it. You know what it looks like. You know what is involved. Then you pursue. You know what is involved. So you take step. That you need to achieve step one. You need to achieve step two, and so forth. So you know. And so those steps that you take are smaller objectives to meet the great vision. And you continue to persevere. Uh, you you don't give up. You focus, and uh, you and focusing means you prioritize. You know. I thank God, in a certain sense, I thank God that, um, how shall we say, I learned these things naturally. I wasn't taught. But one of the things that I, I found in my life was that I had too many interests. Um, uh, in the past, I was a jack of all trades. There's nothing that uh, you, except maybe history, I, I was telling me to do something about history or remembering dates and, you know, things in the past. I, it, I have a poor memory even for the present, uh, let alone 1859, what happened. Um, but basically, I because I could do a lot of things. I was doing anything and everything that came my way. And uh, later on, I realized how spent energy I had given um, without really achieving much. So you had to focus. It must focus. But in focusing, it doesn't mean necessarily that you have to do one thing. What it means though, is that if you have four, five, six things to achieve, objectives to achieve in different areas, different fields, I will tell you about myself in a minute. You must be able to multitask or actually the real term is serial tasking. Even computers don't multitask um, that easily. What they do is that they put one in the background and uh, what is on in the forefront, it, you, you, you complete it to a certain extent that you can come back to it and continue. That is serial tasking. So um, you do this, you finish it to a certain extent, not completely. Uh, single tasking is that you, you finish one and then you, when you reached completely finished one, then you start another one. No, serial tasking means that you complete to a point that you can come back and continue. And, and so you juggle your life being focused, knowing that today this is what I'm doing, or 
this morning, this is what I'm doing. And I'm doing this to this extent. And then when I come back in four, six hours, three days, whatever time, I'll continue. And so you must be able to add a multitask or serial task if you have more than one um, uh, focus. But you must focus. Focus also means that you must not be distracted. You must not be distracted. And the, the best example I have, uh, I have I'm not so sure you know that uh, Oxford Street in Atosu, Accra Osu, um, starts from Dankwa Circle and ends at the Osu Castle. Do you know that? Oxford Street starts from Dankwa Circle and ends at Osu Castle. And uh, at the time, um, for a long time, Osu Castle was the, uh, the seat of government in, in Ghana. And, and so assuming that you, you are from Dankwa Circle and you want to get to the seat of government, you, that, and that is your target, that's your focus. You want to be the leader of Ghana, or you want to be a leader. From Dankwa Circle to, it's about um, maybe two miles. And there are many, uh, junctions and and indeed there's a why even there's a Y junction or a fork that you could go left or right um and all those things uh on the way are dis distractors because you want to get to the end and there are major distractors like uh, food joints uh hotels um shops and uh um drinking bars um, it's so many, so many distractors on the way. And you, you can have supposedly a good life just sitting uh, within the first uh, 200 yards on that road and enjoy life. Meanwhile, you're, you're not moving any further towards the castle. And the thing about that place is that there's a lot of traffic. Lots and lots and lots of traffic. And so even on the road going towards the castle, you could be in traffic for hours. And therefore it's easier to be distracted. Let me have a rest. Let me, it's taking too long to go. Let me go have a food joint. Let me have a drink. And before you realize, um, oh, there's a shop. You're looking at uh, the latest television. There's so many distractors. The thing is that you must be focused, not forget the purpose for which you are set yourself to act, to perform. And you must perform. You must perform excellently to your best. And you must develop yourself. Or go to school and be developed. I, I you know, presently you have a lot of information on the net. Um, I developed myself and I, most times I didn't have to go to school after doing my basic um, schooling, I have to develop myself. But yet I had to go to places, uh, to go to short courses, uh, epidemiology, WHO, this, that. I had to develop myself because of new knowledge that is coming, but importantly, new responsibilities and new visions that I'd given myself as I went on. Hey, what? This means that your goal, your objective, um, your vision should continually change for the better. You, you have a vision and uh, you were, when you were in primary school, you had a certain vision, this is what I want to be. But when you are near there, you find that, oh, when I was a child, I used to see like a child. And the world was so small. Now the world is bigger. So now that I'm older, I can see that, yeah, my vision was small. And, and so therefore I had seen beyond that original vision. And then I start over again. I plan, I pursue, I prioritize, and I perform. So now that I've given you the, the summary and main major points, now let me tell you my life. And in by so doing, see, where, and what, uh, and when um, all these points uh, were realized. And they are different, I've got um, different aspects of my life. First of all, this me, I'm Reverend 
Professor Adukwe Hesse. And as you've heard, I'm a professor of medicine and also a professor of physiology in Accra College of Medicine. And I'm a Reverend Minister of the President Church of Ghana. So as you can see, already I have got two tasks. And the third task is that having founded, uh, co founded the Accra College of Medicine, uh, I'm an administrator. So I'm an educator, I'm a lecturer, faculty member, and I'm also an administer um, the college. And I'm a Reverend Minister, it means I have um, the responsibilities, I have responsibilities in the, in, in the, in the church. And I'm a counselor, and um, so I have responsibilities outside my church. Then, uh, um, most importantly, I'm a family man, and as you heard, I, I have a clan of uh, 13 plus 215, not to mention um, other, other extended family, and not to mention also uh, those whom I have, in a certain sense, brought up or nurtured into who they are, and therefore we have um, a tie of belonging. With all this, I started like anybody else um, in, in uh, primary school, secondary school. And I don't remember when I, particularly the first time I said I was going to be, I'd like to be a doctor. But all I remember was that in primary school, uh, they said we should prepare ourselves to take the common entrance. We're the first, I think we're the first year, first in our school, um, and take the common entrance. And the common entrance then, uh, if for you, some, some of you may not know, um, before that time, they going to secondary school, you had to go through middle school. And middle school was four years. And, but we were the first to take the common entrance at primary school at the end of six years, um, 1964. I think the previous year, 64. Anyway, so I decided that out of the blue, I don't know who gave me, I decided I'd like to go to this school. And so I went and got forms and I failed to go and, and the comment I failed that school. I myself failed it. And I gave a show to my father. I said, well, if you'd like to go, you know, that school, you have to do well. And so, I had a vision. I like to go to the object, objective to go to that school. And I knew to go to that school, I have to be uh, excellent in at the common entrance. So naturally worked hard with everybody. Went to that school and first time I went outside of home. I've been living, you know, in those days, you, we all, there were very few boarding schools in primary and I, they are not actually recommended um and so first time as away from home living by myself having gone to school with people much much older than uh we some of you some of us were and it was all strange so the first three years in uh, genius and our time was called genius secondary school i think we're the second year to be called genius secondary school and genius secondary school it was Objectiveless, just living, going back to school, and doing everything naturally, as as um, because we we're not developing who we were. But I was at the end of the third year. That now we have we have been told at the end of this year, you have to choose your subjects for O level. We we're doing all subjects then. You have to choose your subjects for O level. And to be able to choose those subjects, you must do well in those subjects. So then I sat down first time again and said, right, I want, I like science. I want to be a scientist. And I like biology. So if I like biology, then it means that I must be a doctor. That's my reasoning. So I chose science subjects. And the things I hated most were history. Uh, I think geography was not too bad, but history was 
and even the English language. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so first time I had to sit down and say, right, I want to pass and do well and get to do those things. And then, so I did well, and I went to the senior secondary school in the same school, and I pursued those science subjects. And much, again, much to, uh, I, what, what I meant was I didn't do too well in, relatively too well in the non-science subjects. English literature was um, not my strong point indeed. It was my list of all things. But I had an objective to do very well at the O level so that I can do science at A level because I want to be a doctor. And so that went on, I, I got to A level and I also, the same thing, I had to do very well. So I can go into the Ghana Medical School because it was very competitive, which I did. And so I went to medical school. Now I want to be a doctor. That's why I went to. Then in the first year in medicine, I got to know that I like physiology. I didn't like anatomy. I didn't like that. But I like physiology. What is this? It is pursuing that which you like, that which you, what you like, you want to do the best in. And so, yes, I did very well in physiology that I was called. I said, uh, given the option, come do those days, we're not doing a BSc in medicine. Come, do a, take one year off your track and do medicine and come and do a honest degree in physiology, BSc in physiology. Now, when I looked at it, it, was, it meant that I would have gone back um, two years because by the time I finished the BSc and came back, my genius would they changed the curriculum at the same time, and the curriculum now was shorter. So my genius who were a year behind, who I not surely would have joined, uh, would have finished the next stage because they are, they are year, they are total years were shorter. So I had to go and join my two-year genius. And I sat down and said, well, yeah, I want to do physiology, and I want to be a scientist, and I want to be a doctor, um, and so, Yes, it's worth it. So I took the decision and I went to do BSc honors in physiology. I came back and then I followed the medical rest of the course. And in the process, I liked medicine, internal medicine. So wow, I got to specialize. So I like internal medicine. And so let me do well in it and let me pursue internal medicine. You see, what means that? Now my vision is increasing because of knowledge. I've gotten new knowledge. I've gotten more exposed to other aspects of not just being a doctor, but you know, there are area, different areas of doc, being a doctor. Now people know about neurosurgery, people know about other aspects of um, medicine already. So when they come uh, because of other people's influence. So when they come for a medical interview, they say, I want to be a neurosurgeon, I want to be a vascular surgeon, I want to be a heart surgeon, because they've heard uh, of how well those areas are doing good or how one or two Ghanaians are, are performing. So, by the time we finished medicine, I knew what I had planned, what I was going to do. I knew I was going to do a PhD in physiology, my target. And I knew, and I planned that when I finish a PhD in physiology, I will come back into, that was science. I'll come back to medicine and specialize in uh, internal medicine. I'll specialize in internal medicine and I looked around and said, ask myself, which areas of internal medicine would I like to do? So now it's not just doing internal medicine, but you want to specialize in one aspect of it. And so I gave myself two or three uh, options to do in internal medicine. In physiology, I had to ask myself, which, area do, do, which areas do I want to, or do I like? I like to stress, do I like? 
one of the other constraints in which I, particularly in internal medicine, I ask myself, which areas are needed in Ghana? Which areas are there not uh, many um, doctors who are specializing? And I didn't like orthopedics. I didn't like, um, no, I, no, no, I think it was basically of the piece that I didn't like. But I found that there are too many surgeons, there are too many uh, obstetricians and gynecologists, few pediatricians, but I didn't like sick children. I like, I had too much empathy and um, sympathy for children who are sick. And I, whenever I went to the children's block, I, 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 was, I felt more um, unhappy rather than and happy to, I mean, I'm happy to help them, but to, to see sick children wasn't something I liked at all. So I, I didn't like, you know, pediatrics in that sense. But I like the, the physiology and the different aspects of medicine. And I like um, renal and respiratory. So I said, when I go, let me first of all do renal med physiology so that later I'll do renal medicine. Because at that time, uh, we didn't have uh, kidney specialists. So thing is, goal, what use would I be if I pursue this goal? How would I help society? So that shaped also my, my goal, my choice. And then we, ah, before I finish medicine, let, let me bring something else because by the time I finished medicine, and uh, within the first year, uh, I, I married. So now it's not just me, my constitution, but I now have uh, a wife. Um, and so now our constitution. But thing was that when I left uh, A-levels, when we finished A-levels, again, in the quietness of my life, I said, I'm going to go to medical school for six years. As it happened, it was seven years. And um, by that time, I, when I come out, I'll be 27. And um, it's so and so and so far this that, look, no, I'll be 25. Um, by that time, I should be married. So when I left A level, and I went to university. I said, any relationship I had, I was looking for a wife. And I had, you know, certain thoughts, ideas about who my wife would be and so so. So I had a goal. And it wasn't just I was, I was looking, actually looking. And every girlfriend I had um, was a yastic, um, with would I be able to live with this girl for my life? You know, kind of realistic. So yes, by the time we finished school, before we finished school, um, we, we knew we were going to get married. And by the time we finished school, my wife, if I had say, as you know, uh, the doctor. So we got married. So now we are planning our life. We both want to specialize. Surgery for hair, I mean, medicine. And physiology. Now, physiology, so we sat down and said, look, now after surgery, I want to do uh, so many years for pediatric surgery. So, specialize and self specialize. So, uh, my case, it was a uh, PhD, specialized in internal medicine and self specializing um, and whatever. At that time, it was Rina. So, we sat down and counted the years. And from our calculation, we take about six years. And, and those days were, I should say, unrealistic because it takes four years to do this and two years to do that and finished. Um, and so that was the time we gave ourselves. Um, and so we left Ghana um, knowing that in six years time, we would have achieved our targets of academic and um, professional uh, attainment and we come back home. And so we went. One of the things that you got to do, I got to remember, is God, you have your priorities, God, family, and nation. 
God, family, and nation. And so both of us, very busy doctors, uh, decided that no, we're not going to split our family uh, in pursuing uh, academic and professional aims or targets or goals, but we'll have to do them together. And so family planning, whilst we're in Ghana, preparing to go outside. We had our first two children, rapid results. One within one, one year in a bit, um, we had, well, within two years in a bit, we had two children. Then indeed, um, she was pregnant when she was doing a primary, you need to do a primary. So what I'm trying to say is that we sat down and, and planned even our family life. Um, we only had children after attaining or before we first of all, before we embarked on the next phase of our life. And then when we went, a part of our planning is that we all had the next set of children. Hello. Hi, hi Prof, please, we're able to hear you. You can hear me. Okay. My screen has gone off. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we had the next set of the next child after our first target had been met. Now we are both PhD. One is PhD, one is a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, one child. So now we finished one target. The next target now is subspecialty and for me, um, medicine. So when that happened, This is in terms of family life. When that happened, now we're finished. It's time to come home. We have finished. It, it's very important. We have finished. I mean, there are other circumstances that made us delay in the past. There are other circumstances that made us leave and come home. But coming home was, was very happy. Look, we all looked, everybody, children, everybody looked forward to coming home because it was our target from days of old. And everything, and we live our life as people not staying or rest, uh, permanently resident, even though we had that, permanently resident in somebody else's country because we had a target. Um, and there's something which uh, Charles said, we had a calling. At that time, I didn't really know the spiritual aspects of that calling, but we felt we had a calling to come back home um, to be of benefit to uh, the Ghanaian society. That's, that's not, I have no doubt at all. There are a lot of people who have that same calling, but some of the other, the distractors have distracted them. Um, and often they come back when they have satisfied the dis distractors. So now it's when they have retired, that's when they come back home. But we had, we thought we had a calling to come home and uh, to be useful. And at that time, there was only one uh, pediatric surgeon in, in Ghana. No, there were two, one in public and one in private. Um, and so there was a the, the burning to come, to come home and be uh, useful. So planning. And when we finished the uh, subspecialty and the, and the medicine and and so on and so forth, and we are coming home, the fourth child. So and the first two were rapid, the other two had uh, four years or so, uh, maybe even more, uh, interval between them. So now, pursue. Now, here I am, a graduate PhD looking for jobs in the UK and I realized there was a time because of discrimination, uh, you had to apply about 10, 20 places before you get two or three interviews. Um, but I realized at that time, I didn't know, but so I applied to a lot of places and I was called, I was called for an assist, I was called for surgery because I applied to those places. I was called fire and wide for, for interviews. And, Somebody had one day, one of those interviews that was called, they more or less 
employed me. I won't use the word beg because it's not, it's not a good word to use. But they brought all sorts of enticement for me to work in a child. You won't believe it, in anesthesia. Um, because I had a PhD, and I had not only a PhD, I had a PhD in renal uh, and cardiovascular physiology. So, you know, that is anesthesia. That is, you know, the basis for good, you know, ICU. And anyway, and then I said, no, the only thing that will make me come uh, to work and do that is that I'll be able to do medicine. If you can guarantee that if I worked in, for you for one year, um, I had gone for an interview in the same hospital and I, for medicine, they didn't get me. If you can guarantee me that next year I'll get the job in medicine and get my postgraduate training in medicine, I'll go and work for you. And they came back, they said, well, you can do locums. And no, I I saw what it meant. Um, you, you know, you make yourself useful and people get to know you there and then they will get you. But at the same time, they say, look, once you've got a PhD, um, you can get an exemption from the primary for, uh, or whatever, for the uh, fellowship for anesthesia. And so at the same time, I could see the house being drawn to anesthesia. And I, one of the things that we have decided is that being two doctors in the same house is good enough. Now, if we're going to be two doctors that are going to work together in theater, then Oh, I love not have that much variety. So um, I pursued, I, I was focused and I said, no, I want medicine. So I didn't get that job. I, wanted it, I, was, I got jobs to do research. I said, no, I don't want that job. I want to do medicine. So I, I pursued and I focused on just doing medicine. And by the grace of God, got that. So we came home. And when we when we were leaving, uh, and one of the plans was go and come back, and you work in Kolebu, then set up a teaching hospital. So before we left, we looked for land, large tract of land. When we came back, what we thought we had is Ghana, we didn't really have. Somebody else had gotten it. So now we went looking around and looking around for land to build a, a teaching hospital. But we got so busy, and after a while, busy with Kolibu, with just so much work to be done, so much to teach. And so after a while, we realized that look, it's it's now not really realistic to think that we could um, start. There were other, so many other considerations that we more or less put it on the back burner of a teaching hospital. But then, just, but just before we retired, and this is how uh, a crack College of Medicine came to be. And uh, our second boy and his wife came to visit uh, me in my clinic. And uh, was, uh, my wife was also present. And we were discussing and said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, one of our, our friends, uh, um, sister, did very well at school. And uh, I cannot get medical school, go, going to medical school. And so what is the issue? So we discussed the issues of people qualified, but not enough places in medical schools in Ghana uh, to accommodate them. And in discussing, then they said, but why don't we set up? I mean, that question came up. Why don't you set up a medical school? And we who were in it, okay. So these are the solutions. I mean, the best thing is that we increase medical school level. Now, why don't we set up a private medical school? Then we discuss the obstacles. And in the discussion of the obstacles, we found solutions. And at the end, the summary was that, look, okay, 
you guys are into finance and we are into academia and you know uh, looking after students and so on, teaching and so, on. so look let's you look for the money and we will look and set up the school and that's how a crack college of medicine one afternoon we decided to uh, just one afternoon one after lunch talk decided to have uh, service of medical school So now, I have to learn how to establish a medical school. We have to learn how to establish a medical school. What uh, vision of a medical school we wanted. How we didn't want to teach them. So it was a time of learning. And uh, within, uh, by the, it was in, let's say, September, there about October, we started uh, what it takes, you know, the paperwork to, to establish a medical school. Totally new aspect of, uh, we call it the medical school, we call this our second life. Um, we, are, we are retired from our first life, which is, uh, you know, working for government and working for Ghana, um, but as employees of Ghana government and the medical school. And uh, now we are working on our own uh, medical school. We got, we passed out two graduates, um, yeah, two graduates, two sets of doctors, and there's a lot more. But now we're thinking, we are planning our succession. We have already planned when we're going to retire. And when the time comes, we know. Uh, when we're going to retire from it all. And before then we were planned, who, no, we have ideas of who, who in, in plural uh, can succeed us. So we have a succession plan. Um, and uh, we, everything we're doing, we're doing by faith. By faith in God. And importantly, by faith in us. With God, because we are with God, we know we can do all things. So you must have faith in God, you must Importantly, also have faith in yourself that you are with God, so you can do it. And so we've acted. Um, we didn't start with money, our retirement, blah blah blah. We put together um, friends and yeah, friends, not family. Friends came, and uh, and that's how we started the medical school. Loan here, and and the loan we didn't have. We are blessed. That's not that at all. But we have a name. And that's one of the things, good name. We have a name, so we can go and get millions of CDs and loan. Not because of some big physical things that is worth something, but because of the name that we have, the integrity of, of the name, um, the, the high standards, the excellence that we, we assumed. And it's a conscious effort uh, that I, um, it's not something that you do naturally. You, you have to, you have to remember that you, people are looking at you. People are looking up to you. So um, basically that's how Accra College of Medicine uh, started. And I, if and I, we are known internationally because not only do we do what we do best, but we learn, learn, I mean, Travel to this place, uh, travel to America, go and spend one month in a place they learn, collaborate, go to Switzerland, learn, go to Italy, learn, go to Britain, learn, learn to upgrade your, uh, yourself, new things, discuss, you form networks when you go to school, when, wherever you go, you network so that people know you contribute. One of the things I tell my students always know and be known. So you, you know, so when you go a place, you want to go to somewhere, let people know that you know. When people know that you know, they would naturally uh, uh, network with you because everybody wants to network with people who know. So let people know what you know. And they ask the student if you don't know, let the teachers know that you don't know so that they can take extra time to um, to let you make you know what you don't know, and 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 so therefore, this is how 
we naturally, and like I said, we didn't go to any leadership training school. Of course, we read, read. Now that we are leaders, now that we want to be leaders, we, we read. And now everything is online, either free or paid. Um, everything is online, but we read. And it's always a calling. I think uh, my time is up, right? So I can uh, stop here and I wait for questions. Because I have a gift of speaking. And once the, the bell is rung in my mind, I, I should stop. Otherwise, I will have an, another chapter. I haven't talked about being a priest or a pastor um, and so on. So Thank you. Yes, Prof. Thank you very much for this hugely insightful session. I think, um, Carl, um, I guess you can take over and moderate the question and answer session. Yes, please, Dr. Hayfron. Yes, so we will take, Prof, thank you so much for your presentation. Personally, I have learned so, so much. It has been a great journey. I'm sure it was, you are, You look like somebody or you sound like somebody who was really determined. You knew what you wanted. And as youth coming up, I'm sure most of us, we are always confused as to what we really want, but you went for it, made sure that all your set targets and everything was really in line. And with the help of God, you were able to achieve it. We all tap into your grace and we know that we'll be great people like you are. So, Paul, please, we'll take questions, a few questions. I know a lot of people are asking so many questions. And I'll take from, okay, one good one. Amanda Wery and Diwuru, she's asking that, great presentation, Prof. Please, do you have any fears or challenges? <laughs> um, shall we take... Oh, for me to answer each individual question or we take a couple okay prof then please i'll group them and now ask um people are literally asking about your life experience and um, one person is also asking prof when in your life and how did you the ref come about i think you said you didn't want to go there because it would take a lot of time so people are all asking about their pastoral work i don't know if you want to talk about okay okay that, you know. Well, it's, that's another uh, form of testimony. But basically, um, I, I came from a Christian background. Um, we, our background, we, our, we, the first um, Hesses were missionaries and, and um, doctors and so on and so forth. Um, and so I came from a Christian background. But it, it was only when I came back after being, uh, you know, um, a specialist and so forth, when I came back, that I felt God calling me. Because then I thought I knew God, but I didn't, um, in retrospect. But I knew, in retrospect also, I knew that God, I know that God was with me. Um, and so that's why a lot of things happened in my life that, yes, I worked hard, but why did I choose to work hard in that direction and so forth? But then, I became born again, and I became very active, indeed, too active in, in uh, ministry. Um, not as a, as a pastor, but as a lay person, because I was on fire um, for Jesus. I'm um, still on fire for Jesus, but there, that was a priority, and we're talking about balance, that one of the things that I felt my wife kept on reminding me was that I had to spend time with the children, spend time with the family, spend time by three days a week and Sundays. So four days a week, I was in, in the full gospel, traveling here, so on and so forth. Um, anyway, so there was a call in my life. And uh, this was noticed by one of my mentors, who was a self-reliant professor IT. So, um, He shared his vision with me, and so I joined him, and we formed the prison ministry of Ghana, I formed him and plus others, from the prison ministry. And through that, also, the, the church 
uh, called me to to become a, a pastor. So I was trained uh, to, be, to be a pastor. Um, so that's how um, I came I came to be a, a minister of the gospel. But the calling was so. I think probably one of the things that made me come back home. Um, I said I was coming to serve Ghana, um, but God also had um, a reason for me coming back home. And that in the UK and other places, it is very, very difficult uh, to hear God's, God's voice in these days. There's no doubt at all about that. It's very, very difficult to hear God's voice. Um, it's, there's so many voices there, so many blockages. Um, so that's, that's how I became a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Prof. I think a lot of people too are also asking about serial tasking. And um, one person from Gabriel Nyaho says that, um, Prof, please, do you think a medical student can combine medical school and other part-time or part-time leadership roles? Please, I want to understand serial tasking. Same um, question asked by Augustus. Um, yes. And please, Prof, please, another one, somebody is asking, and how did Prof Hesse generate funding for education abroad? And how, and also, how did you he cater for his family while in school? Okay, so let's do serial tasking. Um, serial tasking has got to do with prioritizing. So you, you have 10 things to do in, in exaggeration. You have to prioritize. So I'm doing this one. And there are this three, and this five, this seven, this ten. And so, serial tasking means that um, you add them all up. So, it's 20. Half of this time goes to that, that time, that time, that time, that, to go to those other ones. And having said that, we, have, we live in different phases of life. And as I implied, we have different, we have the big target. Um, split up into smaller targets. And, and so at any one point in time, Bible talks about seasons and times. As a, as a, let's say, as a student of medicine, your season is student of medicine. Your primary target, the small one, is to become a doctor. Any others are, you know, of less importance. Doesn't mean you don't do anything, but it, you don't, you don't act as an osofo whilst you are a medical student. Go and ask the osofos who acted. The best one is uh, uh, Bishop Dag. You will have issues with your primary target, failures. You can't, purpose is you can't serve two masters. And that's basically what prioritizing is. You, you, you minor in this, a major in being medical student. Medical student is 24 7. And I says, uh, when I calculate, it's 48 52. Now, it's 48 weeks of the 52 weeks in the year. You are a medical student full time. No other time except your the time of uh, time for God and time for leisure that you can squeeze in something else. So it, it's a prioritize. Um, like I said, even having children, you prioritize. You, you prioritize. Even uh, marry, you prioritize. If whatever it there is, you prioritize. There's a time that um, you know. Uh, I was a student, and as a professional student, I had to live um, 140 miles away from home. So it meant the weekends that I was off, that's when I could come home. I mean, all that didn't rub well with my children, that's why no, of them are doctors, but you prioritize. But that's what the situation is. You prioritize. Now, that's the uh, multitasking. So multitasking and uh, serial tasking is that when you prioritize, you, you spend more time with the primary uh, objective. Leave it at the point that you can come back to it. And, and then 
spend a little time, worship God, uh, go to the choir, or you know, prayer meeting. Yeah, but not the whole for you, the whole week you are doing prayer meeting. Like we have students, we had to call their uh, bishop. Well, not we, the bishop came. The students, the bishop came and said, Why are my people failing? I said, Your people are failing because for to them it's God, 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 not uh, learn, learn, learn. And God, the Lord Jesus Christ spent 30 years of his life learning worldly things and preparing for his ministry. He didn't spend the time doing all those wonderful things when he was uh, in class one, although some uh, religion thing uh, says so. He prioritized. And we also have to prioritize and then see our task um, with that priority in mind. Now, what was this? the second one? Huh? Well, please, Sam, someone wanted to know how you were able to fund your education. Ah, um, yes, education. Okay. Education. Uh, funding uh, was by a scholarship. Um, by doing the BSc, uh, by doing the BSc, taking that time off, the, now the school was looking and is still looking for um, doctors to to specialize in certain areas and um, the whole country is, is doing so too and but I must say this is not so well defined um, and so to I was sponsored to do um, the PhD uh, after the PhD I had to find jobs that were training jobs as a as a doctor there are certain, as a professional, you do certain, you go into certain jobs there where there's training. And so I had to go and compete with, um, I was in the UK, so I had to compete with English guys for those jobs um, to be trained as a specialist. So whilst you're working, you're, you're training. And whilst you're working, you yourself go to, um, of course, now you're being paid. So my postgraduate uh, specialization, basically, I worked for after getting those jobs, I worked to pay myself. So I paid for uh, my exams and so forth, and uh, any other, and the other courses that I took on by myself. But to get to the, uh, to do a PhD um, by scholarship, and there are a lot of scholarship going around. If you do well where you are, and you get a good reference, and you also search for scholarship, Nowadays, again, you have internet, so it's easy, um, relatively easy. You compete. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Please, uh, Melody also wants to know that how did physiology and anesthesia was great for you? You did physiology and anesthesia was great for you and will fetch you more money. What single thing made you still insist to do internal medicine? And somebody is also asking that um, environment is one great obstacle in pursuing our dreams. How can one realize his dream from a very disadvantaged environment? Example, less endowed schools, financial constraints, and the like. Thank you. Well, actually, I uh, talking about uh, anesthesia. I actually, turned down an anesthesia uh, job. I turned down an anesthesia job, and, and I took, uh, I pursued my target of uh, doing internal medicine. Um, but anesthesia, um, like I said, goes very well with physiology. I'm mean, say so that physiology goes anywhere at all in medicine. Physiology is one of the the bad bones of once you understand physiology of normal and then you know the pathology, you know the pathology, how things went wrong, it, you, you can correct. And basically, um, that's what that's the good thing about physiology. So, physiology is a backbone of uh, uh, good medical practice. Um, what's the other one? Car. I don't know why it's going away. Well, please, I'm here. <laughs> please, the other question was um, 
the environment he was in that in the ah, lesson yes around. yes the environment it, the environment like i i, I illustrated is is life in 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 this world and the most important thing is most important thing is one know your target to know how have an idea of how you need what you need to do, what and so for how you're going to get there. Have an idea. So you sit down and plan and find out. So it, like we do for like a, starting a medical school. Wow, I've never seen so much uh, scrutiny uh, in in running a medical school. I was a head of department in the University of Ghana Medical School. I had a part two departments and acting in others and so on. But that was a microcosm. No one really came to check how you're doing. But in private, there's such a bad name about private that every, every, let's put it this way, every guard dog is, you know, backing to make sure that you're not stealing or you're not breaking a law or something. I hope you understand the illustration, just an illustration. Um, but you see, you've got to know this is what you have. I'm, I'm going, we are going to interview um faculty in the next few weeks and i'm looking through their cvs and some people started as a field assistant so they got a diploma in epidemiology and they worked and then they went to school do, did a bsc so now they did a diploma and a bsc now from bsc they worked then they went to do uh, masters now they've done PhD or they're doing PhD. Achieve what you can achieve. Strive for what you can achieve. That is what a, a, an objective is. An objective is achievable. You have a goal. I want to be a, a scientist. I want to be a doctor. I want to be. You are coming from this background. Certainly, it, it is not advantageous. By strife. We have in our medical school a young guy from Wa. Young guy from Wa did from Wa did very well from Wa. But if you compare him to uh, the Achimotans, the Wiggy the this, the that, the private, the this, he didn't do well. That is absolute comparison. But it's from Wa. So he came down to a cry and said, look, I want to be a doctor. And of course, I can't be a doctor with this grace, but I can't be a doctor either in Wa. So he came down to a cry. His long story short is that he, he had, oh, there's a cry called your medicine private school. So he comes to say, look, this is my situation. That was his ask. And, and we looked at this guy. He's talking nice. He's talking sense. He has objective. He knows he has his vision, yet he doesn't have the means, environment. So say, okay, we'll help you because you, you, you have done what you can do. We'll help you. So we went looking for friends and uh, well-known people. Please, we have this guy, he's good. I mean, he's come from where he's got this aggregate. And, if had been in the old days, he would have gotten scholarship, but now the competition is crowded out. So it's in American schools, and I think it's the fourth or fifth year now. And he's doing very well. Now he's come into a good environment to learn. And so now his potential has, has blossomed. The environment has changed. Potential has blossomed. He's, he'll be a doctor, a very good doctor. So, yes, we have, but point about Ghanaians is that, ah, I learned something this past, uh, was it yesterday or day before? Some of us are, are ducks. Some of us are ducks, and think most Ghanaians are ducks. What do, what do ducks do? They waddle and do quack, 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 always complaining and not working properly. Quack, 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 my God, you didn't give me thing in my wings, I can't fly. Even my legs, I can't work properly. Quack, 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 quack. Complaining, complaining, complaining. Others are eagles. 
Be an eagle wherever you are. In whatever circumstance, the Bible says, wherever you are, let your light so shine before men. Be excellent. And then ask. Seek. And then knock. Persevere. And you shall obtain. For he who asks is who will seek, who he who knocks. Done for him. Done. It's done for him. So yeah, I agree. Environment can be a disadvantage. But disadvantage is not, it's not permanent. Every disadvantage can be surmounted. It, takes, it, takes you, it may take you a bit longer, but if you have a passion, like I say, I like, because I like this, I'm pursuing it. You have a passion and, uh, for, for that goal, you do what it takes. Wow, that's a nice story. And I think that Prof will all start coming to Academy Girls School to ask for. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. Please, somebody also has a question. He wants to find out if you are an exceptional student in school. Albert wants to find out if Prof, were you an exceptional medical student in terms of grades? And also, how about your primary and secondary school years? And um, Gabriel has also been asking this. That's Prof, please, can one own a private teaching hospital in Ghana? He's been asking this several times. So, Gabriel, please, I've answered your question for you. Thank you. Uh, that, okay. Uh, let me answer the last one because I tend to forget this. Um, private teaching hospital. A teaching hospital has certain standards. And we can own private hospitals, right? And when your hospital meets those standards, then yes, you, you have a teaching hospital. It is a teaching hospital, it's not any hospital that students are taught. Um, for example, you students can go and experience, uh, and we send students out into the community to experience medicine practice in medicine and learn that in Ghana. Villages, they go to villages, they go to district hospitals, they go to regional hospitals, they go. But those places are not called teaching hospitals. Students go there, they are taught, they experience, they are taught. They are not teaching hospitals. A teaching hospital has a certain standard. Staff, the quality of the staff, the number of the staff, the, that staff from doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and so on and so forth, the equipment, the, the wards, the number of the number and variety of patients. All those go in, into, uh, I, I, I'm a consultant in mental health, so I, I know all this. All this is going to, what determines that this is a, a, a hospital for the village, this is a hospital for the district, this is a hospital for a region, this is a hospital for uh, a teaching hospital, this is a, a quaternary, that is a, a tertiary and a quarterly uh, or quaternary hospital. There are certain international standards. So if your hospital has those, then your hospital is a teaching hospital. Then you, you can have students, and those students will be attending a teaching hospital. But yes, yeah, students go to village hospitals, and they are taught there. But the village hospitals are not teaching hospitals. And so far, there is no private hospital in Ghana that has qualified to be a teaching labeled a teaching hospital. Have I answered the two questions? Prof, please, then there's a last question here. Please, somebody is asking that, I believe that since we have much information on the internet and we can now access everything from the comfort of our homes, is it advisable for us to pursue programs that need much effort like law and medicine online? And the other question was about, please, I don't know if you answered if you were an exceptional student in medical ah, school. Exceptional and, student. And your primary school and secondary school years. Yeah, I was uh, in the younger uh, levels, I was a natural exceptional student. Uh, I remember that uh, one, I was first in the class, 
And uh, one beginning of one year, I, the teacher called me and said uh, that the Minister of Health, so the Minister of Education, has asked her uh, that I should make friends with her son. So from that day on, we're friends. Why? Because he wasn't serious. Like, friends, friends do and undo you. Um, it's a peer, peer to peer mentorship. Um, so we had a peer to friend, and we've been friends ever since. And of course, his life also changed. We went to the same school, we passed, we all went to the, the same very good school. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I was naturally a good student. Um, but then in the first three years, like I said, first three years of secondary school, I, I was a as a, a student, I didn't know his left and right. I didn't have an objective. I just left home. I'm just living in a boarding school. But from, from, from four onwards, you have to, you know, and when you come to university, no matter how naturally gifted you are, in medicine, you have to work hard. There's no natural, you know, ability. So when people say, Leaders are born. Some people have got their uh, talent, but unless you you want to, if I, if you want to play piano, you're born with the talent like Beethoven, and uh, by eight five you can play the piano. If you don't practice or whatever, you will, you will flop. At the level that you, you you want to get excellent level, you have you have to practice, and and so yes. You may have to push, but we all can practice. We all can uh, sort it out. And if you manage your time properly and you, you have a good uh, learning technique, you will do well, you'll be excellent. Thank you very much, Paul. Please, we'll take the last question. Mm -hmm. One person is asking, Paul, please, I'm currently a second year physician assistant student. I do have the pleasure to be a medical doctor in the near future. Please, how can I get to this, this vision? Maybe you have to go to Accra College of Medicine. <laughs> well, you have, for us, you have to have the money too. <laughs> uh, the thing is that um, you have two options. In Ghana, you have two options. You are, obviously, you couldn't get into, uh, because of competition, you couldn't get to a medical school. So do well, learn hard in what you have now, with what you have now. And then have a good degree because you must have first class or second upper to be able to go into the graduate entry, entrance uh, medical program in any of the schools. Yeah. And of course, you must have money um, if you want to do graduate training, you must have money even in Ghana. Um, so that's your, your option. Learn hard, get good grades, and then apply. And please also apply as scholarship secretariat. Apply your district. Uh, what what do you call them? District assembly. But that is politicians. But and be useful. Even when you come back on holidays, people don't realize. When you come back on holidays, go into the hospital. Go into the communities. Let let people know that you, you, you aspire to be greater than what you are now. And in that, therefore you are helping them. You're helping them. And then you find that you may help somebody in the community who would, would help you. Okay. I've answered all the questions. Um, there was a last one you skipped about um, reading medicine and law online. Somebody was asking now that we have a ah, ah, <laughs> Yes, ah. that would be the last question, please. No, medicine, law, you can read uh, the law, as far as I know, I, like medicine uh, in two parts. Um, there's, a pro there's a professional part, and then there's the uh, academic part for law. And so the academic part, you can uh, read online and take exams online. But professional part, you it has been uh, in person um, as much as possible. And for medicine, the yes, there's an academic part, and yes, uh, you can do 
some of it online, uh, but there are practicals that even in the scientific part that you you have to uh, be present. Uh, having said that, Ghanaians, we are not, we haven't reached the, the level of awareness for us to do any part of medicine totally and completely online. Um, it's not possible when it comes to the clinical part, but even the scientific part. Um, our first few months in, in doing online um, in, in uh, they were doing the first few months of COVID showed us uh, that Ghanaians, the whole system, including our own selves, are not ready for online, purely online uh, learning, teaching and learning. So the answer is yes, maybe, but presently, most of it must be physical in, in person. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. We have been very, very enlightened today for your presence and your presentation. It was very, very great. Personally, I've learned a lot. Maybe I might also want to branch into internal medicine. <laughs> yes. Oh, we, we, we'll take you on seriously. Before I realize we are, we are calling you to come for an interview. <laughs> I hope so, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. It <laughs> was very, very nice having you. Thank you so much. And we are great.